Hi, my name is Dr. Imran Hamzawala. Uh, I'm a consultant gynecologist and a gynec oncologist at Safi Hospital. Uh, I'm also the chief of the robotic surgery department at Safi Hospital. Uh, surgery obviously has been a very integral part of medical practice over the years, and I'm sure everyone who is listening to this talk is aware that that uh, you had an open, uh, you know, surgical approach, where you would make a cut on the patient's body and eventually the surgeon would do what he had to do. But the focus at the times when open surgery was only the option was to, was to try and um, reduce the mortality, as it were. So when we talk about mortality, which means to save the patient's life, and that's what the focus was for the doctors at the time. Now, what then eventually transpired is that once I've done this life-saving surgery as a surgeon, have I actually made that patient's life better? That's the biggest question that, we, that, that came up. So when we talk about making the life better, we talk about things like, can the patient jog after having had that surgery? Can he have a normal sexual life after having had that surgery? Can he do the job that he normally does after having had that surgery? So that's what we call as quality of life. And, and the quality of life or reducing the morbidity um, of the patient became the focus because surgery and uh, forget about surgery, but any branch of medicine needs to go through a process of evolution to improve itself for the betterment of mankind. And uh, then came the dawn of laparoscopy. So when laparoscopy came in, it was treated with scorn. People started thinking, ah, yeah, this technology will, will never fly. You know, it's, it's just another gimmick. It's not something which is important. Open surgery is the way forwards. That's what people thought about. And here we are in 2020 now, um, where to even think of doing a surgery which is not laparoscopic uh, is not, you, you, you can't think about that because patients come to you and say, doctor, can this be done with minimally invasive approach? So human being, as we all know, is resist, uh, human being is resistant to change. But if the change is for the better, you know, it brings about uh, a lot of good to the mankind. And in the endeavor of making surgical practices better, um, gave rise to the birth of robotic surgery. Now, robotic surgery, when, when I say robotic surgery, sometimes my patients say, Dr. Sab, robot surgery karega to aap kya karoge? Well, that's not the truth. Uh, the robot is not autonomous. It's only controlled 100% by the surgeon himself. And what they do is that you use modern technology uh, to try and do a more precise job when I say a more precise job, it's because of the fact that you have a 10 times magnified, high definition vision that you can see of any organ that you're looking through robotic surgery. The second most important bit is that the tips of the instruments move, you know, or the wrist of the instruments move, which wasn't possible with conventional laparoscopic surgery. So you can get into areas which were initially thought to be quite difficult, quite easily with robotic surgery. So the whole idea of doing surgery is to take the problem out with the least possible collateral damage. And if there is a technology which is allowing you to do that, then that technology ought to be embraced. Now, it's, it's, it's not a surprise that you have over 3,500 robots right now operational in the US. And India has very much warmed up to the idea of doing robotic surgery. So it is my strong belief that if you combine modern technology with good skills, and I must insist, good teamwork, there is a very, very good chance of achieving good patient outcomes. And, and that's what we all should be striving for. Looking at the way how robotic surgeries come in, we do robotic surgery at Sefi Hospital and some of the other hospitals in India also do robotic surgery. Um, obviously, you need a few cuts to allow the instruments to get in. So when we talk about advancement of robotic surgery, which was your question, they're now, they've now invented what we call as a single port robotic surgery, which means that even though three cuts be here, we don't want two, three cuts. How about we could do this entire surgery with just one cut? That's how we are progressing in, in surgical practice. And I think we should progress in surgical practice for the betterment of our patients. And, uh, and that's exactly uh, where the world is going. And I'm excited to be a part of this endeavor. So um, when I... I have been uh, uh, in India working at Sefi Hospital for the past four years. Um, prior to that, I have worked in the National Health Service in the United Kingdom for over 15 years. Um, as a part of my training uh, and as a, part, uh, as a part of my being a senior resident, I was, 
I was involved with the robotic surgical program at a hospital known as the Royal Surrey County Hospital in Guildford in Surrey. Um, as you would know, in the National Health Service in the UK, it is incredibly important to follow the guidelines. Uh, and the guidelines are there for a reason. The reason why the guidelines exist is so that the errors that may happen are minimized. So when we started off with a new technology in the UK, um, uh, which was robotic surgery at the time, there were new guidelines that were put in place and the guidelines that there should be a trained robotic surgical nurse. Uh, there should be a dedicated technician available at the time of surgery. Should there be any issues or any problems with the robot? Um, uh, the robotic anesthetist needs to be a specific anesthetist who understands the importance of how an anesthesia needs to be given at the time. Um, and so on and so forth. I must insist that there were, there were teething problems. Let me give you an example. Uh, an example was that um, uh, we, in my specialty, there are uh, women can get what we call as endometrial cancers, which can happen because of obesity. So we had very large women who needed this, this technically challenging surgery. And we have to, what we call as give them head low, where the head of the patient is on this side, and the pelvis or the feet are on this side. This is the position in which the patient needs to be in a, what we call as a steep Trendelenburgs or a steep head low position. So you can understand that when a heavy patient is in this, is in this position for, for a reasonably long length of time whilst doing the surgery, there's a small chance that that patient might slip. So that's, that's critical because, because when that happens, a lot of issues can happen. So in our initial few cases, we found that patients started developing uh, problems with the neck and the nerves got stretched and so on and so forth. And, and so what do we do when that happens? We talk to relevant departments that do robotic surgery. So we talk to a lot of units across Europe and especially um, one of the units of gynec oncology led by Professor Jan Pearson at, in London, Sweden. We talked about them as to what did they do at the, uh, for their cases? Did they face similar problems? And believe it or not, they did. So what they came up with an ingenious idea of using what we call as egg crate foam. So egg crate foam, the industrial foam that you use, you put that on the table and you put the patient with direct skin contact on it. And lo and behold, that keeps the patient exactly where the patient should be and the patient doesn't slip. So the advantage that we had over a period of time, these were teething times for us. And then as and when we got more experience, we realized that we could, we could master the ability of controlling all these problems. And it was great to bring all of that knowledge and expertise. This was just one example, but a lot of situations like that, getting, getting all that expertise and coming down to Sefi Hospital and imparting that in this practice. Um, Sefi Hospital really uh, prides itself in being one of the centers in India which does multi-specialty robotic surgery. I'm sure, you, friends, you are all aware that, that, that robotic surgery is spearheaded by uh, a group of consultant, consultant surgeons which are urologists because, and the reason being that prostate cancer is, is a cancer which is best dealt with robotic surgery. In any literature, it is considered as the gold standard to do prostate cancer surgery operations. It has to be done robotically. Hence, the urologists spearhead uh, the robotic surgical program. So majority of the, of the units across, across India that you normally tend to see are, are very urologically driven. But at Sefi Hospital, we take great pride in, in saying that there are multiple specialties that, that get involved in, in this robotic surgical endeavor. So we have, we have transoral robotic surgery for base tongue tumor uh, excision or tonsillar tumors. We do radical neck dissections robotically. We've also done esophagectomies, lung lobe resections, mediastinal node, res um, node resections. Um, we've done whipples for pancreatic cancer robotically. We do colectomy operations robotically. As far as my gynecological practice is concerned, we do um, radical hysterectomies for endometrial cancers. We do node dissections, and the list goes on and on. As far as urology, uh, I'm sure you all know that prostate cancer is one, but in the kidney, partial nephrectomy is one of those cases where robotic really stands, uh, a, 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 it's, it's a very good tool to use to get the best possible outcome. So uh, pyeloplasties, ureteric uh, resection and anastomosis. So all of these surgeries are, are done at Sefi Hospital. And I think we pride ourselves in being one of those units which is very, very multi-specialty. 
And we had that thing in mind from the word go. So at the inception of the program, we, we decided to train nurses ourselves. So I was involved in training the nurses uh, myself and, and giving them uh, the know-how of how to manage situations in robotic surgery. Um, and, and we have such a wonderful system that, that the rotors of, the, of those specific nurses are arranged in such a way that one nurse is available throughout. So say, for instance, during the initial learning curve of the surgeon, where these surgeries take a bit of time, and if, they, if that time trickles into the non-working hours, there will still be a robotic surgical nurse present at the time. So we've made sure that all of these protocols and guidelines, which sort of have trickled down from the UK experience, are incorporated at Cefi Hospital, so that we create the best possible scenario for the surgical experience. And in creating the best possible scenario for the surgical experience, that translates into good patient outcomes.